QR code. So the uh, research uh, of our group is uh, really uh, rooted to this uh, industry 4.0. So if you look back into human uh, society history, uh, we have already finished three industrial revolutions. Uh, each of them has profoundly changed our lifestyles, our productivity, and our ways of thinking. So currently, we are going through the fourth one right now. It is uh, called Industry 4.0. It is uh, named as the cyber physical systems, which include things like Internet of Things, robotics, automation, uh, big data, human machine interaction, um, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and so on. So the key is uh, how to link the cyber physical world together. But I don't want us to leave uh, human out of this picture because uh, there is a risk that we become irrelevant. So personally, I would like to call it cyber physical biosystem. Uh, why do I say we have a risk? Um, it's actually promoted by Elon Musk. Uh, he said that humans must merge with machines or become irrelevant in AI age. If you can't beat the machine, it's better to become one. So um, there is an emerging vision that in the future, uh, humans not only have to interact with machines, humans need to merge with machines or robots. And if you uh, carefully look into this kind of a uh, human machine interface, um, we realize that our human body is intrinsically soft, continuous, and an analog, whereas uh, uh, conventional machines or robots are rigid, discrete, and uh, digital. Um, the question is how can we really bridge this huge gap in between? And in the future, is it possible for humans to be more like robots and robots to be more like humans? So the first task we could uh, envision is to uh, digitize human body because all the machine world is uh, digital and electronic. So human body is continuously radiating um, highly distributed multimodal personal data about our health, our readiness, our intention, and emotion. We say it's distributed because from head to toe, we have uh, very different signals. If you want to measure the brain, it has to be from the brain. If you want to measure the muscle, it has to be on the muscle. It's multimodal. We have electrical signals, which are biopotentials, or electrophysiological signals. We have mechanical motion, blood pressure, and a step pressure, we have a thermal signal, we even have a lot of biochemical markers. And it's personal, of course, everybody is radiating different data, it's continuous. So ideally, uh, we want to build something called a digital twin in the cyberspace of our human body. Um, and then this uh, uh, digital avatar is able to interact with machines connect to the internet and uh, contribute to the big data. So digital twin is actually a concept that first proposed by NASA in 2010 um, for the uh, numerical models of uh, spacecraft. But nowadays it becomes increasingly popular because of things like uh, uh, metaverse. It's basically a virtual representation or a, an avatar that serves as the real-time digital counterpart of a physical object or process. It has the following features. It has to mimic the structure, the context, and the behavior of the physical asset. It should be dynamically updated with physical data, and ultimately it should inform decisions that realize value. So as we can see, um, it, if we can build a digital twin for human body or even for human organ, then uh, it will have a significant impact for things like disease management, performance tracking, uh, metaverse, and so on. 
So here we uh, realize how important the uh, physical data is and to acquire uh, high fidelity physical data from the human body, uh, we need a soft electronics, bio-integrated, bio-conformable electronics. So this poor guy is really armed to the teeth. Um, we are um, consolidating a lot of your work uh, here today um, onto this uh, uh, poor guy. Uh, we have Dehyun's artificial ret retina, John's um, uh, optogenetic uh, brain patch, our um, wireless uh, chest ETA2, and uh, uh, a lot of uh, shear phones, uh, twining uh, nerve electrodes, um, Stephanie's Edura, and uh, Professor Zhong Ling Wang, and many others, uh, energy harvesters, and so on. Right? So it's a really booming uh, field. We want to uh, really um, use fundamental science to build uh, ultimately soft bioelectronic systems uh, to really achieve our vision that one day human and a robot will become uh, seamless. So that is our vision and um, that is why even though I am a mechanician, I still want to work on electronics and turtles. But uh, we still uh, start from fundamental mechanics of flexible and stretchable structures. And after we have a good design with the mechanistic guidance, uh, we look into how to build them on digital manufacturer and also how to transfer them onto human body. And um, sometimes <clears throat> conventional materials are not enough. We have to look into nano and 2D materials to achieve uh, some very specific uh, goals and functionalities. But even after you have a beautiful design, you have a very good manufacturing process and you are using uh, the most uh, emerging materials, uh, you still have to worry about the uh, interface between um, bio tissues and electronics because this interface dictates the uh, um, performance. Um, and uh, we have uh, also tried uh, to engineer um, some physical or dry adhesives, but I will not be able to talk a lot about them today. So um, this uh, uh, four research threats eventually uh, bring us to those kind of uh, system level integration and uh, human subject validation. Our effort uh, to digitize human body, uh, we have to use highly multimodal e tattoos uh, and we have to put them at the right location to measure the right thing. But uh, while human is trying to be more digital, um, robots are trying to be more mimicking human. So um, this is a new area my uh, group is trying to uh, enter. So previously we focused on e tattoos, which is for digitizing human body. Uh, now we uh, are also looking at e schemes which is for human mimicking robots. E-skins are for robots to wear. And e-skin is a very um, uh, big and uh, active field. Um, there are a lot of pioneers uh, working in this field, and we're just uh, newcomers. So in summary, uh, the future of mobile health and uh, human-centered robotics is to try to close the loop. I'm uh, uh, modifying the schematic here. So for um, human body, we want to perform biomarker sensing, signal processing, data analysis, and uh, um, come up with a medical diagnosis either using uh, artificial intelligence or uh, um, doctors and nurses develop treatment plans and even develop, uh, de um, deliver the treatment uh, also using those smart electronics. For the human robot interaction, uh, Dehyun and I wrote this paper um, when soft robotics was uh, first uh, launched. So the robot has to have a human mimetic sensing and uh, using the e skin, for example, and they have to stimulate the human. So this is the one human robot interface. The human has to process it, to decode the human. You have to use brain probes and other things. And the human has to control another human robot interface. And then the robot act, which is involving soft actuator, and another loop would have to keep running 
and closing the loop should be our future uh, work. So in conclusion, uh, e-tattoos are for human wear, whereas e-skins are for robot wear. Many soft materials and sensors can find applications in both fields. Bioelectronics interface dictates the e-tattoo performance, and e-skins are trying to mimic human skin. There are a lot of opportunities lying in mechanics, materials, electronics, bioengineering, data science, and very importantly, their convergence. There are many challenges, but I think most, mostly lying in ourselves. Are we innovative enough? How about privacy? How about ethics? How about your user compliance and so on? But overall, the future of soft electronics is wide and bright. I would like to acknowledge uh, many old and new collaborators over the years, especially De Hyung, my um, uh, most uh, published collaborator, and uh, uh, many of my colleagues at UT and uh, medical collaborators and collaborators uh, all over the world and also DOD collaborators. And uh, I stopped collaborating with my um, advisors after I became independent, but I really want to thank them um, for recruiting me, for uh, mentoring me, for supporting me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. And um, my fantastic group and beautiful uh, Austin, Lake Travis, and uh, my uh, sponsors. Um, uh, Three uh, live e-commercials, I guess. First, uh, we have a faculty opening in our uh, mechanics group right now. The uh, application is still open and we will review on a rolling base. So uh, if you are passionate about mechanics, especially experimental nano mechanics, please uh, apply and uh, we will start the interview uh, in January, February. And uh, second is that in June 2020, um, Ray and Chad are hosting this uh, um, 19th U.S. National Congress on Theoretical and Applied Mechanics. And um, Yongju and I are organizing a mini symposia called Mechanics of Flexible, Stretchable, and Biointegrated Electronics. We have three fantastic invited speakers who have already confirmed to attend Wei, Xuanhe, and uh, my co and uh, we don't know uh, how this um, pandemic would evolve, but we really hope that we can um, meet you and treat you at Austin with good science, but also good Texas barbecue and a large Texas beers. <laughs> and uh, finally, I am an incoming associate editor for Nano Letters, uh, led by Terry and Itzi, and um, we are uh, trying to become the premier nanoscience communications journal for groundbreaking results. With that, I would like to wrap up 